Hi there, I'm Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. This is going to be quilting video number two and it's a companion video to go with my floss tube number two video where I talk about uh, my cross stitch and my embroidery and showing my haul because I am a brand new cross stitcher after 20 years. Um, back into it and just thought I would do quilting videos as well but separate so those ladies that really want to know more of an in-depth story about my quilts and the tips and just the things that I do will have a separate video to watch people can watch both and I would love it so if you um if you enjoy these if you would subscribe that way you're going to see whatever videos come along that I do I'm going to try to do them weekly and then you can decide, do you want to watch floss tube? Do you want to watch quilting? Both, one or the other, you're good to go. So in my lap, I have my stitching buddy and this is my Riley. He is my rescue dog and he is being shy today, but this is my Riley. Look at him. Um, so he is, when I am stitching, he is with me. When, when I do everything, he, oh, <laughs> it's a chihuahua for you. Um, I should have been more careful of that, but um, he is my stitching buddy and I just love uh, my favorite times um, in my sewing room are when uh, my husband will come and visit me or when my my second son was still living at home, he would come in and hang out and I would stitch and talk and and this is just my my favorite room in the house. I love my sewing room. It is crammed with all the sewing things that I enjoy. I've got a lovely fabric stash that I inherited from my mother. My sister has shared fabric with me. I have collected quite a bit over the years. I started quilting again. In my quilting number one video, I shared about the very first quilt that I made when I was 18. Then I took a break and got back into it in 06. And um, I have been loving it. I love um, hand applique. I love hand quilting. I like machine stitching. And I am just going to share with you a little bit about a couple quilts. Now, the quilt on the wall behind me um, is the first one that I'm going to share about. I'm going to share about five different projects, two of them that I purchased as a teenager, and then three of them that I made, and just a few little tips along the way. So let me put my Riley down in case he starts barking and my eyes are probably red. Today is September 12th and it seems like all of California is on fire. If I look out my window right now, um, usually for Southern California, it's as, it's as good as it gets, but right now it is incredibly smoky. I just went on to check to see if we had a fire in our city and we have the Bobcat fire over um, west of me in Azusa and we have the El Dorado fire going right now in um that is east of me in Yukaipa and it is working its way up to Big Bear which is um which is um it's it's tragedy um but I don't believe any lives have been lost so far and just constantly praying for the firefighters and the personnel fighting and all those who have been evacuated and are affected um I have some friends who have been evacuated the fire um the fire is uh it's a challenge, but that's why my eyes are burning. That's why my eyes are smoky and it's kind of hot in here because I have the whole house closed up. So I am just going to forge forward and I am going to do this video and it has been so exciting for me. Thank you so very much to all of you who have been viewing my videos and subscribing. I know the biggest um, community that people search for is floss tube and I found it by mistake. I started watching these videos and it's an amazing community um, within YouTube that is so encouraging and so uplifting and inspiring and it, it just drew me back into cross stitch working with linen after I had not cross stitched until since the late 90s and now I'm back into it and loving it so that's why I'm going to do both types of videos. So this one it's going to be fun because in my floss tubes um, I like to have a backdrop quilt and then I can share more about it and just leave it set up and then I'm good to go. So this is, I have one wall in my sewing room. I have a sewing room that is in desperate need of um, a coat of texture and a coat of paint and my husband's going to help me with that um, this winter because right now he's up working at our cabin which is why I'm called Log Cabin Stitcher. Um, but also that is our sweet little money pit that will be endless amount of work. Um, but keeps us busy and out of trouble. 
So um, let's just dive in and let me tell you about this quilt. What did I need to tell you about ahead of time? I am very distractible um, and I am quite distracted with all the smoke in the air and all that. So I'm just going to stay focused on this and we're just going to keep moving forward. Um, oh, you can follow me on Instagram as well. Um, I do it where it's, it's about my stitching life. Um, so I have an in, I was going to say innumerable. No, I've got about 10 different stitching hobbies that I enjoy doing. And so you can see those. I'm new to Instagram, um, but I am Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher on Instagram. And I would love for you to follow me and just see the fun things that I do. So this quilt behind me, um, it's one that I, there was no pattern for that I saw. It was just a picture that I saw on Pinterest. I, I love Pinterest and I love images. And um, so instead of the magazines of the old days, I love having Pinterest and um, and I love following different people, looking at all the quilt images. And sometimes I get inspired and I hunt it down. I love the hunt of trying to find an old, outdated pattern. Sometimes you just can't do it. And other times I've been able to hunt it down and find an old pattern used um, either on eBay or Amazon. And that has been fun. I looked for this pattern. I looked for the designer, couldn't find it. Um, so it was just a picture and I just, I just did it. And this was very, it was just about, the picture was just about what this is. I love these traditional fabrics. Um, I love the dark. I love the muddied. Um, some people call them depressing. Um, and they like the bright and cheerful ones, fabrics. And these, I love these because to me they're warm, they're comforting. I'm a very traditional type of person. And so these are just the fabrics that I love. And I wanted a dark red floral, but it's hard to find those. And I also enjoy um, shopping online. So I do the independent um, quilt quality fabric quilt stores. And I was just searching different stores um, online that I have that I like to shop from. And I found a floral, but sometimes it's hard to tell from a little thumbnail what it actually looks like. So I didn't want to buy yards of it, but it was on sale. I think it was like half price. And so I ordered a yard of it and I realized I loved it. It was going to be perfect. So then I ordered five or six yards because it was probably $4.99 a yard, which is amazing because now I think quilt quality fabric is like I've seen it $12.99 um, and $11.99, $10.99, just depending on where you shop. So I bought several yards of it, and it is also in another quilt that I'm going to be doing. Um, actually, I think I'm going to be using it on the Joe Morton Basket Parade quilt that I showed on my quilting number one video. So this one, I titled it Flying Free, and um, I have a quilt journal, and I shared this in my last um, quilting video, but this is my quilt journal and it is truly a journal. These are the Moleskin notebooks. I get them on Amazon and I, I really love them. I love these. I don't like spiral bound notebooks. I love these cause I can open them up, flatten them up. I can sit down with my coffee on my couch in here and just journal. So sometimes I will have just journaling in here of, of how I feel, how I feel about quilting, what's going on, what I saw at my quilt guild that inspired me. And um, I am a part, I'm, I'm in the Inland Empire in California, and our local quilt guild is called Night Owl Quilters Guild. And um, when we start meeting again, it's at the Rancho Cucamonga Senior, Senior Center, and if you're local or even within an hour, come check us out when we start meeting again. It is just an awesome group of ladies, and um, we just have fun. And one of the quilts that I have going is inspired... I'll show about that when I get there. I, I am very distractible, but I'm trying to stay on track so I can get, I want to keep these videos um, no more than 40 minutes if I can. So we'll just keep going. So in my quilt journal, um, I like to keep track of the quilts that I'm working on and just a little bit about them. So I was able to find this one before I even named it Flying Free. I just called it Red Panel Flying Geese. These are the flying geese. So this is the flying geese block. And um, I have two favorite blocks, the log cabin block and the flying geese block. And of course, it's emotional reasons. Um, log cabin, I love hand quilting and the log, uh, the log cabin block is great. Don't even have to mark it. I love quilting in, in that groove of those. But I also love the flying geese. I love the simplicity 
of it. I love the scrappiness that I can get from it. And also my mom taught me how to make these blocks from the, it looks very complicated, but this is how I keep track of my rulers. This is the Eleanor Burns Quilt in a Day um, set of flying geese rulers. So let's see how I can show you. Didn't even think about that. How am I going to show you? There we go. Maybe that has writing on it. There we go. That's where you can see it. So I've got these little sandpaper things to keep them from moving around. And you can see there's two sizes of blocks on each set of rulers. So I have all the rulers. And this one is actually right here. So this is a three by six finished um, flying geese. And then I'm sure I made a six inch panel in the center. But it, when I first got these in the mail, my mom um, lived in Colorado. So she was not right next door to me to learn how to do this. So I got this and it was just like, it looks like origami. It looks very complicated. So I told mom, how the heck do I do this? And she said, bring some fabric. I'll teach you when you come on your visit. So I did. And it was such a fun memory. Um, I am sure that's why I love this block, but you can see the scrappiness. I love scrappy. And when you use that flying geese ruler, you end up with four blocks. So because I like it so scrappy, I just figured out how many blocks I wanted to make with the math. And that was probably with a cup of coffee to help me with the math because I am not a calculator. Um, not good at math, but I figured out how many different fabrics that I needed to have a combination. So I only had four matching blocks. Then I am so scrappy. I had it where the background fabric, you, I don't know if you can see from here, but every other one is a different fabric. I didn't have enough fabric. I really wanted to do them all the same. And I wanted the look to be not too distractible. So I did not want the white back or the cream background to be too different and too scrappy. And so I just alternated. Um, I had two fabrics that I had enough and they looked close enough to make it go. And I loved it. So what else do I want to share with you? So that's my quilting journal. Let's see where I can put that down. Um, okay, so in... In my journal, when I was looking to see when I started it and when I finished it, um, I started it last year and I have a lot of UFOs, which in the quilt world, it's unfinished objects. I have a lot of them. I am sitting right next to a cupboard jammed full with all these unfinished projects and I really want to get them done. So I had been on a mission of only, I'm not starting anything new that didn't last long um, and just finishing up projects. But you know what? I figured it's my hobby. It's my fabric. I've got stuff here. If I want a gazillion unfinished objects that will never be fun or done, they'll always be fun, then that's 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 okay. So I had seen in my quilt journal um, the day that I started it and I was just saying that I was having an emotionally rough week and I just felt like starting a project and I did it. Bam. I had everything um, because I had already uh, purchased that red um fabric in the background so I had it and I just started it and within a month the whole top was pieced and I work I would say I work I don't work full time because I, I work on call so I work probably about three quarters time and so I was able to do it and it was fun then it sat for a couple months and then at the beginning of the year I picked it up again to do the sandwiching where I put it together and on a future on another um, project that I have here I'm going to show you um, how I do the sandwiching of it um, I put it together and I just started hand quilting. Now I love um, hand quilting, not with thread, but I do the bigger stitch, which is actually more of a medium stitch. And I shared about that in my quilting number one video, but I really love using, I love these beautiful Valdani balls of pearl cotton. I have a collection that, cause I'm addicted to color and I have these in some plastic drawers and I just love looking at them. They're on my bookshelf. Um, so I love quilting with this. This is size 12 and I do what I call like a modified big stitch. It's more of a medium stitch and it's probably instead of the quarter inch that a lot of people use, it's more of an eighth inch, um, or maybe a little bit larger, but I find I can load my needle with about three stitches and then keep going and, and it gives me joy. I love it. So now that you've seen this quilt, if I pull this up and it messes it up, it's going to be okay. So in our guild, we have a UFO challenge that we have five UFOs that we do each year, but it has to be bound and it has to be labeled. And so that has been really good for me to bind it. So I had this fabric from my mom and I can see these are geese. So 
of course, flying geese I wanted to use, and this was just fabric. And then I just um, put my information on there, and that was my label. I like to have fun labels that go with the quilts. Um, but I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, and I'm not going to yank it off the wall. Um, but in here, let's see if we can keep doing that. Don't know if you're going to be able to see the hand quilting that I did. I chose a matching thread. I did not want the hand quilting to show. It's very simple, and I like doing a continuous line, and so it's very fast. And I was just doing that continuous line hand quilting. It was just to keep it down, not to really show. Then in my journal, um, I had it drawn where I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do the hand quilting on these geese. Now, I do not like quilting. There is no seam allowance right here. So what I ended up doing, and it was kind of a test, Generally, I would want to, what, what I hand quilt down, it makes the next block pop. Usually, I would love to have had the stitching go here on the outside, excuse me, and there to make that triangle piece really pop out, but that's that has a seam allowance right there, and it is not fun to stitch, and it doesn't look as, as nice of a stitch. So what I ended up doing is I just went up and down. I traveled underneath, over on the side, on the red, I came up, stitched there, stitched here, went over on the red, just in that seam allowance, I traveled up with my needle and oh, just continued on the way up because I like to do one continuous um, stitch. It goes much faster. Then I wanted a little bit more stitching, so then I just went up this edge. And um, no, that was there was no seam allowance there, so it was nice. Now, if I had stitched here, there is that seam allowance. So I'm going through four layers of fabric plus the batting and it makes it harder and it's not as beautiful of a stitch. So this is my flying free. And um, it was pretty cool because a lot of the, so, so there are some fun things, you know, fabric therapy and quilt therapy and stitching is my therapy. Um, Angela Walters has that quilt store. And it truly is, to me, it truly is therapy. I've I've been kind of on uh, what I guess would call a journey of a natural type of a lifestyle um, when I turned 50. And so it's been now seven years that I've been doing that. And I really like looking at lifestyle changes to help reduce the stress and anxiety in my life and help uplift my mood and keep me more balanced. So one of the things that I really do enjoy is fabric therapy, stitching therapy, because to me, and I know thousands and thousands of other people find it the same, it is very calming, and and um, I guess the word would be centering, but it to me, grounding, I like that word better, it grounds me, and it gives me time to think, and sometimes I, I don't even have music, I don't have anything going, Riley is like always, that's my dog, always right next to me, he's down on the floor um, by me right now, but I love stitching. And then recently, when I discovered floss tube, now I've been binge watching floss tube while I've been stitching. So that's been very fun. Um, but this this quilt for me was very good working through some just emotional, I miss my mom terribly. Um, she has um, been gone. Um, it will be um, coming up this fall, it will be um, six years that she will be gone and um, miss her terribly. And then just thinking about my dad and and the amazing marriage that they had. They were married over 50 years, and, and I journaled about this too. Um, and that's part of why I did this quilt, and then my mom taught me the flying geese. So it was just a good, healthy way for me to work through a lot of emotions. That was just one of the things that I do. And then I even took it with me on a trip out um, in March. Um, took a trip out to see my dad in Colorado and we would be watching TV and I, I had my little ot light that I brought with me and I would just stitch while we talked and watch TV and and then uh, there I was out in Colorado and lockdown started so um, got home safely and I had this thing in my journal this was in April and that was when huge um, I, I've had to work through different stages um, from lockdown and from the fear of um, of COVID. And I have worked as a mobile notary this whole time. So I, I have not been, you know, I was one of those workers that were out and I had to work through all the fear very quickly. Otherwise I'm already pretty crazy. And so I needed to be on top of my game and do my thing. So I found in my journal that I wrote in April that I wanted to finish projects. So in case I died, I would not leave a bunch of unfinished projects. So, um, I've gotten over that now. I figure if I leave unfinished projects, oh well, it's my, 
<laughs> to do. So there I go. I've gone back to being selfish, but at the time I was just very wanting to finish things up. So that was my project. That was how I worked through my emotions. So how am I doing on time? 20 minutes already. Okay. So here we go. We are going to go a little bit faster. My next project. Oh, but what else I wanted to tell you? I chose the binding on this quilt. It is this fabric and I, it went with it because this is a very dark brown right there. It's not black. It's a dark brown. This is beautiful, but I chose this fabric. This is a Joe Morton fabric and I love it. I adore it. And it's funny because it always reminds me of a cabin up in Big Bear um, that my grandparents owned um, and my mom went to when she was young and now it's in my uncle's family. Um, but it always reminds me of that wonderful old, it's a 1920s cabin um, up in Big Bear. And for whatever reason, this reminds me of the front room. I don't know if there was a fabric like that, but it's just, um, it just reminds me of that. So again, that was just a comforting thing that I had around that because when I was a kid, that was my favorite place to be. And then that's why we bought our own log cabin. Um, in uh, we bought it 30 years ago and it's a 1940s log cabin. So I just like old things. Um, okay. So my next thing, cause I have a stack and I'm working through it. So because I love hand quilting, this is another project, um, that I have that I worked on. And this is one that is, it's called the leaders and enders project. So for those of you that may not know, um, when you're working at your sewing machine and you want to keep, you want to sew a piece yet you want something after that instead of cutting the thread. I'm not explaining it very well because I think I'm trying to rush through the video. If it goes longer, it goes longer. So leaders and enders, let me tell you what they are because this is my leaders and enders project that my sweet, sweet friend Judith in Colorado, who was one of my mom's best friends. And then um, when she moved back to the city where my dad lives, I got to meet her in, uh, when did I meet her? Was it in, I think it was in March or my trip before and just, I just love her and she has an amazing, I call it a quilter's paradise. She has her sewing studio. She gave me a box full of these and these are my leaders and enders. So as I'm sewing, say I'm chain piecing, I come to the end and instead of breaking that thread and it always wants to shoot back up and I have to re-thread or it keeps my sewing machine on the same level. Um, quilting along again I'm not going to go deep into that because I'm not so good at explaining but these are next to me so I have this whole thing next to me on my sewing machine or actually underneath my tray and I just pick up one um, it's just a grouping these are the ones that are unsewn there's hundreds in here um, and then I just shoot that through on my sewing machine so it's just sewing a seam that's why I call it unintentional but I'm doing it on purpose then I take a bunch and when I'm on the phone sometime you know, I'll iron them and then I trim them up and then I'm going to have a whole box full of pieces. And then I found this in a magazine and I thought, oh, wouldn't that be fun to do something like that? A nice scrappy fun quilt. But where are my, oh, here they are, my block lock rulers. So these are other rulers that I love. And again, I keep them just in my big Ziploc bag on my quilting table. But this is the block lock ruler. So it's B-L-O-C-L-O-C. And I think I use this one. It's a two and a half inch ruler. And um, I love it because it has a groove where it goes in that seam. It locks it in and um, makes for a very nice, beautiful trim without your ruler sliding. And another way um, that you can make those. So I've got my leaders and enders. That will be a whole other quilt. But I had for this one, it was a Jan Paddock. It was a mini charm pack. And so these are some mini charm packs for those of you who may not know. Um, I think probably everybody probably knows about these. These are great mini charms. You can usually get them for $3.99 to $4.25 is generally what they are. This is a French general and this is a, I cannot say her last name and I don't have my glasses on. So let's put my glasses on because this is Susanna Scraps and it is Betsy Chuchinian. Chuchin, Betsy Chuchin. Um, so Susanna scrap. So you look for some that have darks and lights. If this is something you want to do, this is the French general. This is, oh, it's French. Shafar. There you go. You can read it yourself. Okay. So you would open these up and that was the size of the charm pack. And then all I did, it's very simple, but again, these are my leaders and enders. So you just do a line down the center and then I, there you go. I did my little stitch line so you can see. So I just shoot them through one side. Then when they're done, shoot them through the next, trim them, iron them, 
Um, cut, trim, iron. Okay, obviously I'm distracted. Um, this is me though. You're gonna get to know me and I am a distractible person. Um, so that's this. And then I did the hand quilting around the edge and I loved it. Sometimes I use it um, as a table topper. Sometimes I have um, I have it hanging. So I tried, I'd watched a video on here. You can do these little corners and hang it. And it wasn't working for me because it sagged. And so then I just sewed on this thing. I have a dowel and I have hangers all over the place. So this is usually hanging on my sewing room wall. So there you go. That's that story. What else do I want to show you? Okay. So the next quilt that I have is called, um, it's called Rick Rack Remix. And, uh, this is a quilt that went bad. And I, this, you know, you wouldn't think that this was bad. It was a quilt that I had put together. Um, we had a speaker, Pam Hatfield, that came to our guild. She had a workshop and I was trying to work with the fabrics that I had, and I had mostly darks. The The quilt that all the other ladies made looked beautiful, but mine, it it just didn't work because of the dark fabrics that I chose. So I, I have tons of fabric, and I'm not short on fabric, but I love these. Um, I love these fabrics, and this is, this is a block that I saved that I am going to use for a label and as a remembrance of this was... This was the original block. Um, and so I took the whole thing apart, even all these strips, and they will they will go into probably a log cabin quilt. But this is what I redid. We'll see if I'm going to be able to show. I am sitting back far enough. So this is fun because uh, I love buying fabric on sale. This is a Kansas Troubles, and I remember where I bought this. It was half price, and so I bought like five yards. And it's usually for a backing, and then again, I wanted flannel. I love flannel. This is another Kansas Troubles. Again, I bought this on clearance. So um, this is a whole, almost a whole, it's mostly Kansas Troubles um, fabric. But let's see if I can actually show it to you. Um, so it looks like Rick Rack, and I call it Remix, of course, because I took it apart and put it back together. But this is, <laughs> this is the quilt pattern. So it's got um, that khaki green, the purple, which I love, the red, which I love and more of the olive green and then purple. And so um, I will hopefully have this as a finished project soon, but it was, uh, I put it together like a month or two ago and it was, it was way too hot to hand quilt. So I started it and then I discovered floss tube and got into cross stitching. But this is the quilting that I do. So there's my hand quilting. I don't use a hoop, I just have it in my lap. It's not gonna be perfect. Um, but it's fun and this is just how I like to do it and I tried um, to I wanted a purple a variegated purple thread that I'm out of and it's just have not been able to find it but um, I sandwich my quilts when you put the backing the batting and the top together in some fashion it's called sandwiching there you can see there's that thread again I have a lot to do but I use pins that's the way I like to do it. And as I'm stitching, yes, the thread does get caught, but it is a great joy when I get to unpin as I go along. Um, and so I wanted to kind of show you, so that's just my UFO and I have a lot to do, but this, this record heat, that's where cross stitch has been marvelous, either cross stitch or hand applique. I have a lot of little tins and my mom had a lot of tins and I just love little containers. So I have tons of them, which are great for, for projects that I'm working on to keep my, my hand work tools together. So I just wanted to share with you this one, why it's special to me. Got um, peanut butter balls from my mother-in-law in this fun little tin. She just repurposed this, uh, Mary Inglebright, and I love it, Merrily Merrily. And I like it that I can see through so I knew what was in it. Then another friend gave me something. Is that Mary Inglebright too? Yeah. Everybody loves Mary Inglebright. So I, this is where I have these all the time. These, um, I wrote these down. It's Colonial Needle Company. They're leather thimble pads, and I get them on Amazon. When I am hand, um, when I'm hand quilting, this is I my finger. I'll give you the finger. You can see my middle finger is wonky, um, and so thimbles do not work on my finger. 
but these do. So it's just a leather sticky pad. So when I get up and do something, I just take them off and I stick them on whatever is handy. So that's why they're always, always stuck somewhere. So as I'm quilting, I just have this sitting next to me and I gather all the, um, the safety pins. What else is in here? Okay, so this is the Valdani thread. This one is a, uh, let's see what color this is. I just recently bought this this year and it looks, it has a purple tinge to it. Tinge, it has a purple shade. It's Valdani, size 12, and it's 172. It's beautiful. It It's a really yummy, it looks like chocolate troubles. Um, it's a beautiful color, so that's in here too. Then I have scissors that um, when I inherited my mom's things, that my sister had purchased these for her, and um, they really work. They're really nice. I've seen some less high-quality ones in stores that are pretty, but I go to do this, and mm, they're not nice. So I love this. I treasure that. Um, what else is in here? Um, okay, so here's something fun that I have. I, I have these all over the place. So as a notary, I'm touching paper. As a quilter, I'm touching fabric. And I have this aversion to touching fabric with dry hands. And I make these. So this is natural. Remember, I was on that natural journey. And in my natural journey, um, five years ago, had a story that I shared um, in my last video about for a time I tried and I, I tried a medication, antidepressant anxiety meds, whatever it was. Um, and I was on it for two years, it had a lot of side effects. And that's why the last quilt was kind of wonky. I couldn't figure out a seam and it was just part of the medication, um, and my body. So I needed to go off meds and I wanted something natural. And I was just praying for a solution and got into young living essential oils and it's very high quality oil, profoundly changed my life. And so a couple months into it, I decided I'd be a rep for the company because I love the, I love the oils. So that's a sideline that I do. And here's something else funny. I am learning how to do these videos in the landscape mode and I'm having to look at a button. And so that's why I keep wanting to look at my eyes. You know, this is a whole learning thing for me and I'm going to get it a little bit better as I go along, but it's so weird not looking at my eyes. Um, I'm used to, I'm used to doing that because I have a whole group um, it's a private Facebook group and I do the Facebook live videos and I do it in profile so I can look at myself and that's just what I've been doing for years. Um, so whole sideline, if you're interested to learn anything about the oils from me or want to get in my private group, um, you can only get in there if I add you in there. Learning about essential oils, no commitment. Um, true, true, high quality essential oils. Your body will know if it's real or if it's not. Um, I will put my email in, you know, under there, under the video, you can click the little arrow and it'll open up. I'll put an email in there that you can contact me. Um, and that's another story, but I make these and we do these in classes that I have. Um, and it's just natural. So I made this, it has essential oils in there and I use this both as a lip balm, but also on my hands. And so I can moisturize my hands, all natural, real oils. But that's in here, and so, and this is almost empty, but this is just what I do. Again, cannot stand having dry hands as I'm doing my quilting. So that's, I always have a lip balm that I've made or one of these that I've made in there because they're nice and small. I was looking for this um, because, of course, I haven't done this project for two months. I love needle books, and in my floss tube number two, I was sharing about the project bags that I made, and I want to make a matching, I think I want to make, um, a matching needle book or some type of a thing to go with every bag, going with every fabric. And I was trying to think about this one and how it was made. So I did find the pattern for this. And again, here's those little nifty things. Um, but I made this years ago and it was fun. But I was thinking, where was this thing? Because I have like a collection of these. But that's all my treasured stuff that I have in that little tin. Okay, what else am I going to share with you? How am I doing in time? 35 minutes. Okay, let's see if I can wrap this up. The next part is not going to take too long. Let me look at, did I, did I tell you everything in there? Yeah, I did. Cool. Okay, so we're good to go. So now my last two things are not things that I have made, but what I purchased, and it was when I was a teenager. Um, my now husband of 37 years, I think that's how many years it is, um, and I... Um, I got together with him in high school when I was 15, and when we were dating, some friends of ours 
um, that she loved old things too. We went to the Rose Bowl swap meet and I had never been there before. It, it was, um, it was cool. I have no idea if they still go, but she was talking about how you, how you bicker, not bicker. I don't even know what the word is where you go back and forth, you know, it's listed for this price, but you know, will you take this? Will you take, I, I'm not that kind of a person, but I thought, gosh, if I can get something less expensive, that would be great. And so this is my story, um, that I saw this quilt and you know what? I want to say it was like $35, which back in the eighties, late seventies, that was, that was a whole lot more money. This is beautiful. It is a real thirties baby's quilt. Um, it is amazing. I have no idea what the value would be now, but it has much more value to me than I was going to say than money could buy, but you know, don't know about that. Um, but anyway, and so I went up to the lady and I said, would you take, you know, I think, it, I think I ended up paying $35 because I went up to her and I said, you know, would you take whatever, 20 bucks, you know, and she probably laughed at me and said, no. Um, so anyway, I probably went to Kurt, my boyfriend, and I cried because it was like, oh, it didn't work and I feel so stupid. And I went back. So he probably said, just go if you want it that bad just go and pay full price. And so I did. And so it always has kind of that thought of, um, I felt like such a dork, um, but whatever, but I loved it. So then when my mom got into quilting and, um, and 30, she loved the aunt Jane, uh, aunt Grace, aunt Jane, aunt Grace reproduction thirties fabrics. And she had some real stuff. Anyway, for years, this lived at her house with her, um, with her bears. She was a bear maker and um, this lived with her and she loved looking at all the little, they are so sweet, um, funny little fabrics. And so um, she loved it. She had it with her and then she gave it back to me and I had it. Here's my other last thing. Another thing that I had when I was a teen, I've always loved and enjoyed old funky things. This is obviously old it is falling apart. It was at an estate sale. The yellow is so faded. It looks the same. Um, and I still remember when I went to this estate sale, um, and look at it, it is terribly old. And I bought this and, um, I had it and it, it was just so cool to me because at the time I loved the old, was it country living architectural? I don't even remember early American life, early American life. That's what it was old magazines with cool old stuff. And so I knew when I got married and I had a house, I just wanted old things. So, um, I had this and my sister was looking at it one time and she said, that's, I thought this was all hand quilted. She said, that looks like uh, an old mattress pad. So they just repurposed an old mattress pad. Uh, <laughs> don't know what that was, if that was part of the mattress pad or not, but, but I treasured this and it's, it's got kind of another cool story too. Um, up at our log cabin. So we bought this old log cabin, um, in 1990 and it is a treasure and it has had a series of unfortunate events. So when we had it and it was open and we were using it, I had it, um, nailed to, cause I had stuff everywhere. I had it nailed to the side of my dresser. And when I would wake up in the morning, I would look out the window and I would see this and it just, it always made me feel so sunny and happy and old and it just had beautiful feelings for me in that. And it reminded me of the cabin that, that was at that time. And then after the fires, I think that's what's going on with me right now. The fires that are going on, um, are reminding me of the old fire that came through and destroyed most of our forest, um, up in the Lake Arrowhead area. I think it was Oh three or, or four. I've kind of blocked it out. The fire came through. We thought our cabin had burnt down because it came through our valley and we thought there, there's no way. Um, it, it was horribly destructive in the Cedar Glen area. And, um, I thought our, our place is gone. Um, so a week later, my husband and my son went up and found that it was, it was one of the few that made it through that fire. And, and it is a treasured old 1940 log cabin. Um, after that, there was just another series of unfortunate events. We had some water damage, um, because we weren't going up there because it, it looked like a war zone to travel to the cabin looked like a war zone. There was horrible erosion. 
it was it looked horrible so we we closed it up for a couple months unfortunately water got turned on that should not have been turned on it leaked through a water heater leaked in our cabin for two months and during that time single income I was homeschooling the kids we needed to board it up and it we boarded it up for 10 years and those were 10 very long very hard painful years but we made it through and it was good um, but during that time I had taken we took a lot of stuff down before we closed it up people would break in so that's why we ended up boarding it up I took this down and at that same time it was like the same week um, of the fire or no of the water damage we bought an old fifth wheel trailer so I took this down that became our new fun thing and so um, I put this up in that trailer and then we sold the trailer I took this down and and now it's been in my sewing room so this this you know it's it's those stories why do I show that thing with that that awful dark spot anyway it's the stories and that's what this represents to me um, beautiful times hard times um, sweet times that we've made it through it's like life life is hard um, but God is good and we make it through so those are my stories um, that is that is what I want to share with you right now and um, did I share everything I did okay so um, there we go so this is my quilting two video um, I would love for you guys to subscribe if you enjoyed this and um, press the like button and um, I'm hoping to do these once a week we'll see with my work schedule if that's gonna work out or not um, but I just have a lot of stories to share and during this time of isolation um, this I think is a really healthy thing for me to be doing and for other people to participate in so again thank you for watching um, the comments that I've had have been so encouraging um, the floss tube videos are of course more popular because floss tube is such a big community check it out if you would like um, floss tube cross stitching is amazing um, but there you go I would like to encourage you to choose joy nevertheless and that is is a lot of my story is in life choosing joy nevertheless and I wanted to share this was my verse of the week this is a cool old notebook that I have in my bathroom um, and that's why it's all wrinkly but the verse I want to close out with the verse from the Bible Psalm 20 verse 4 may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose so um, there you go God bless you thank you so much and um, I'd love for you to comment and um, to share with me what fabrics that you like what traditions do you like what old things do you enjoy or or new things so I'd love to get to know you thank you for watching Goodbye.